Hello and welcome to my channel. I want to show you this graphite pencil drawing of a grazing horse. It's going to be done in a slightly looser style than usual. The pencils I'm going to be working with are Faber-Castell graphite pencils. I'm going to use the regular graphite pencils and the matte, bit graphite matte pencils. The paper I'm working on has been primed with clear gesso which creates a rough textured surface. Now normally it would be a good idea to do the sketch before you apply the clear gesso but I forgot to do that so now I'm going to have to do the sketch um, as best as I can because on this surface it can be a little bit difficult to uh, modify the smudges and things like that to remove them completely with an eraser but like I said uh, this is going to be done in a slightly more loose style maybe a little bit more on the impressionistic side so uh, maybe there's no need to worry about every single detail but I will try to get the proportions of the animal to, to look realistic so the head is down, it's a grazing horse, so there's going to be a little bit of shadow under it. And as for the background, there's not going to be much of a background. I'm just going to shade the sky here very lightly. And I'm going to use uh, an HB regular graphite pencil. So I like to use, I've already done a number of drawings in this style, in this technique. I like to combine regular graphite pencils with matte graphite pencils. The matte graphite pencils are less shiny on regular paper, but on this surface, clear gesso, they're both kind of matte, except for the fact that the matte graphite pencils are simply a little bit darker, or at least their darkest grades like 10Bs, 12Bs, etc. are uh, even darker than the regular graphite pencils. So. Once I put down a little bit of that uh, HP and shaded the sky lightly, I'm doing a bit of blending with a soft brush uh, just to make that a little bit smoother, a little bit more even because I don't really want any texture or detail in that part of the scene. Also, uh, what you can already see is that I will be trying to create contrast between the main subject and the background in some parts of the horse's body that we all have areas of darker value which will be darker than the background in others and there will be parts of the horse's body which will be lighter than the background they will be catching a little bit more light from our light source and I will be creating contrast by reserving the white space or maybe even by doing a bit of erasing in order to create that contrast between the between the lighter value and the darker value of the background anyway now I'm using a slightly larger brush to, to blend the background more evenly. And after that, I'm starting to work a little bit more on the horse. I started drawing the tail here. But uh, I'm going to refine its appearance a little bit later. Right now I want to do a little bit more of the background because this part of the background here is going to be a little bit darker. I'm going to draw some vague shapes of trees and bushes in the background. So if you look at the composition I think it could be roughly divided into three parts that are not exactly of same width or height if you will but um, they're kind of similar. The top part is the sky then this middle part is the uh, the darker part of the background with the bushes and the trees behind the horse and of course the lower part will be the grassy area that the horse is standing on and grazing the, heart, uh, the grass on and uh, that's going to be a little bit lighter obviously than that middle part of the background. I'm going to use that darker value of the middle part of the background to create some contrast uh, with the lightest parts of the horse's body. Now I'm going in with a much darker pencil for the tail. I'm using a 12B 
and uh, that's going to be the darkest pencil I plan to use in this uh, for this piece. Now, on this surface, on clear gesso, the uh, the graphite pencils tend to behave very similar to charcoal because they're much darker, they're much more matte and they're easier to blend so on this surface graphite is much faster to work with and I would say uh, a lot more fun to work with except for the fact that it's a little bit messier and it's a little bit difficult to um, achieve cleaner edges to work on smaller details and things like that but you know if you accept the fact that you're going to be working in a slightly messier looser style then it's going to be fine and this horse like I've already mentioned is going to be done in a slightly more loose style maybe with uh, less uh, with fewer details fewer textures and things like that anyway I shaded the um, lower part of the hind legs and now I'm shading the back side and the thighs I started out uh, for the lower part of the legs which are a little bit darker they're covered with a slightly darker fur I used darker pencils like a 10B or a 12B and here at the top I'm using slightly lighter values like a 6B and I'm trying to uh, create variation in value to suggest some smaller shapes within that larger shape and to use that I can use also blending tools in addition to the pencils because sometimes when you push the graphite in using a tutelion or something like that you can create areas of lighter value or of darker value actually uh, when you push the graphite in a little bit harder and you can take away a bit of value by using erasers or by using a clean brush it just lifts up or moves around that um, excess material and makes the area that you're working on a little bit lighter so you can play around with your um, with your blending tools to achieve the desired effects and another tool that I'm using for blending of course is my finger because uh, that helps me to push the graphite into the grain of the paper and make some areas even darker than I would be able to with my blending tools except for the fact that brushes and totillions generally tend to be a lot more precise anyway I'm shading this part of the background here between the legs I'm gonna need that darker value because some parts of the legs which are facing to the right will be lighter and uh, that's a way for me to create contrast and that contrast in value is what gives the viewer uh, the suggestion of volume and depth in a scene and I think you can already tell by the positioning of the lighter areas even though I haven't done that much shading yet I still have to do a lot more uh, uh, shading on the rest of the horse's body but I think you can tell already that the light source is coming from above and more from the right side which means that the shadow side is going to be on the left but of course some of the shadows on the horse's body are a little bit confusing because it's a very complex looking muscular body and um, these all of these raised bumpy parts are uh, casting a bit of shadow onto the area next to them so you know it's uh, not as simple as shading uh, like for example a sphere or, a, or some other kind of a simple object because here we also have these larger objects like for example if you look at the hind side and the thigh area it looks pretty round but it's uh, way more complex because of all the muscles and things like that now I'm shading the midsection area, the belly and the chest area and um, I'm going to do, do some blending there starting with my totillion so that I can first blend some of the smaller areas I use homemade totillions and they make for a very good blending tool because they allow you to blend these smaller smaller details now 
For the larger areas I prefer to use brushes because they move the graphite easily from one part of the drawing to the next and you can achieve some very interesting painterly effects with them almost as, you, as though you were working in watercolor. Now not all brushes are the same. I generally tend to use two types. People often ask me about the brands. I don't really know the brands of my brushes and I don't think they're that important. But the type of the brush can have a slightly different effect. Like now I'm using a hard bristle brush and these Harder, harder bristle brushes, they can push the graphite into the grain of the paper a little bit harder, making the areas a bit darker. While the soft synthetic brushes, they blend very smoothly, but they move the material over the surface of the paper, and they tend to make whatever you're blending just a little bit lighter most of the time. So when you want to push the graphite in, and when you want to blend something, but at the same time, retain that darker value or make it even darker maybe it's better to use a harder brush so these are just some of the things that you need to learn as you go along and you need to experiment with different blending tools just like you experiment with different types of pencils you need to experiment with different types of blending tools because um, different people will kind of have a different uh, way of using them they, they will have a slightly different experience with them and you will find that they behave differently and they have different effects so you want to you know you want to use multiple types of blending tools uh, so that you could use all of their advantages i'm moving on to the front legs here and i'm doing the darker bit here this uh, lower part of the leg and the shadow area to the left and uh, once i blend that and once i've established that darker and shadow area I will do the part of the background to the right of it so that I can establish the contrast between the light side of the leg and the, the shadow side of the leg. And that's really what makes legs and entire body more three-dimensional. So the, uh, in case you're wondering about the brand of the clear gesso I used here, I used a Liquitex clear gesso. So the paper is a Fibriano drawing paper about 200 GSM so when you're applying clear gesso it's better to use a thicker paper because it won't get too wavy or it won't get damaged um, by the clear gesso and uh, when you apply the gesso you need to allow it to dry for you know at least 10 to 12 hours maybe even more and then it hardens and you get a nice uh, textured surface similar to sanded papers and with graphite pencils as I've already explained that allows you to work much faster to blend more easily and to get those areas of darker value much much more easily than you would on regular paper it just it's just faster to work with that way although like I or, or like I've already explained, uh, it also, um, create, you know, it's, it's also a little bit more messy and uh, a little bit more difficult to draw some finer details. And uh, now I'm doing this part of the background here. Again, some more trees or shapes of canopies of the trees in the distance. And this part of the background is going to be darker, you know, just like the one on the left and uh, that's going to make for a nice contrast uh, with this part uh, of the mane, the top of the neck and the mane which is facing up and to the right so it's facing towards the light source it's glistening in that uh, setting sun or whatever it is and uh, it's catching light from that light source and that's why it's so much lighter than the shadow side of the horse's neck and the body and um, I'm creating those areas of lighter value by reserving the white space. I simply try to avoid putting down graphite on that area because I know that erasing can be a little bit difficult on this surface. So when I can reserve the white space in advance, I like to do that. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to do a little bit of erasing. When you do erasing, 
it's better to to, uh, to use a kneaded eraser because it just lifts up the material without smudging and um, uh, messing things up and pushing the material deeper into the grain of the paper which makes things even worse so I'm shading the, the, the other front leg here and again uh, shading in front of it to the right of it rather to establish the contrast between the background and the light side of the of that leg I think the the horse's body is really starting to look three-dimensional now and though it looked a little bit messy in the beginning I think as I'm uh, working more and more on the shading and fleshing out the details the drawing is starting to look more realistic and uh, much more detailed both in terms of the anatomy and also maybe in terms of the texture because there will be a little bit of texture even though I, my focus here is not really on the details uh, in, in this one I want to focus on the larger contrasts the simpler contrasts now I'm shading the rest of the background here to the right so like I said these are just some suggestions of trees and bushes and here I'm working on some shadows in the foreground area I'm afraid that I skipped over a part of the drawing process here because I simply forgot to turn on my camera and um, during that part of the drawing process I did the shadow under the horse so the shadow under the horse now kind of integrates the horse better into that uh, into that scene and makes everything look more three-dimensional and now I'm adding some random shadows here in the foreground like maybe these shadows are coming from some of the nearby trees or bushes and uh, I'm gonna blend these with this harder bristle brush as well because I want this area to remain a little bit darker Well, once I do that I will have to do some refining on the horse because some parts of the horse's body were shaded in such a way that I, I, I don't know they didn't really make that much sense to me so I decided to go over some of those lighter areas rework them a little bit so that the shadows and the anatomy maybe makes a little bit more sense and is a bit more consistent with the direction of the light with the position of the light source and maybe I can add a little bit of texture in the process here and there I will clean up some of the edges and draw some of the finer details and put in some of the darker details in some of those areas which are supposed to be darker but which maybe became a bit lighter during the blending process and some smaller details on the head as well even though that lower part of the head the, the nose and the mouth area is in the shadow so you can't really make out all of the details now I'm just trying to clean up the edges of the hooves refine their shape and appearance a little bit better and uh, I'm uh, doing a little bit of erasing with a kneaded eraser with a kneaded eraser you can clean up the edges or lift up the graphite from some of the areas which are supposed to be lighter but you have to keep reshaping and remolding that uh, kneaded eraser so that it would be able to pick up that material just refining the appearance of this foreground area adding a few suggestions of some hair, uh, of some uh, um, grass, blades of grass, clumps of grass here and there and now uh, doing that with an, er uh, with an eraser as well just so that I can have a little bit more texture and a little bit more suggestion of detail here in the foreground and uh, here I'm using the kneaded eraser to clean up some of the lighter bits on the head and that's going to make the head more three-dimensional as you can see but you have to be patient with this because you can only do so much with a kneaded eraser before you need to reshape it again because it picks up the material, it picks up that graphite dust and then it just won't erase you have to 
reshape it and by reshaping it and kneading it you're actually sort of cleaning it and um, you're allowing it to do its job so I did a few uh, marks, a few lighter marks with the kneaded eraser and I think they made a lot of difference because they created a lot of contrast and cleaned up some of the edges and made the um, made the anatomy of the horse look a lot better. Putting down some finishing touches here and um, I'm also going to put my signature here in the lower right corner. So now the drawing is finished. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. Let me know what you think in the comments. Check out my other videos and for longer videos and more content check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.